So welcome to our long range uh, university level one course. So we're going to condense as much as I can in two days to give you guys the information you guys need to know to be successful not only on Wednesday but for you guys' future endeavors uh, for long range funding. All right, guys. So I have this wind meter here. What are we getting for wind? So remember, we got we got to uh, have an approach to this, right? The, the more consistent our approach is, the better we'll get at as far as making wind calls. So right now, I've got two, two and a half, three. Okay. So right now it's calm at three miles an hour. So what do we see downrange? You can hear it at six. You can start to hear it around six miles an hour. Now once I establish that at the shooter, what do I need to do? I need to confirm it with one of the other two sources downrange, which is in between me and the target or at the target, right? Because before I make my initial wind call, I want at least two out of the three to be what? The same. Because if they're not the same, then I need to reevaluate what my wind call is. Does that make sense? Figure out out of the three, which one is more prevailing, okay, whether it be left to right or right to left, before I make that wind call. So right now, here's the shooter's right to left. Now at 300 yards, do we see the same thing and feel the same thing? Grass is laying that way. Okay, good. So we know from me to the target and in between the target is doing what? It's a right to left. So my initial call would be a right wind hold. Would you agree? Now we need to figure out speed. So we don't need to then go to middle and verify that. At this range, I would figure out just between the target, yep. yeah. yeah. But you can longer, as you get longer, absolutely. Yep. All right. So now, as an observer, right? If I was observing or spotting for my partner, what do I give him for a wind call here at 300? Half or three quarters. Yep. Give him one. Good. Okay. So now we're bracketing in between what the average is and what my gust would be. Good. So right now at the shooter, it's about two miles an hour, right? So what does that mean? It's going faster at the target than it is here. Down to five, down to four, down to four. Now it's died out, it's one. So what I what I do in a situation like that, I'd still make an average between the two, all right? So my initial wind call would probably be still be three. I'm always gonna round it just to be bold. Okay, this, I mean, this is kind of a no-brainer, right? Considering I've been talking the last couple days about doing what? <laughs> Squaring my body up to the target, okay? Because when I square my body up to the target, that lays up what? It lays up me setting my natural point of aim, right? And it also helps with what? Target acquisition. Okay, so what I want to do, find our target. Okay, there it's at. Look over my sights. I'm going to square my body up to that target. I'm going to get my rifle in the general area. Again, as I come into my firing position, I notice I keep my eyeballs on the target. Okay, look over my sights. Now, so, as long as my magnification is backed off, as I look into my field of view, what should be in my field of view now? My target. So you see how now that lays up what? It lays up my natural point of aim, and it helps with target acquisition. When we get into our tripod sitting positions, right? We always want to build the position that's comfortable for us. What I want to do is take the bottom of this rest and put it at my sternum. Does that make sense? All right. So right now it's a little low. So I'm going to raise it up a little bit. All right. If I have an open leg here, I always want to try to achieve what? Going back to our body position, we want to always try to achieve elbow support, right? Because the elbow support's gonna help minimize this wall, right? So instead of trying to lift my leg up because I can't flex him down, again, build a negative space, right? And if I'm hunting with a friend, I can use his gear, okay? So now I'm just resting this leg on here, okay? I'm gonna take his sleeping bag or whatever, or take my backpack, 
and I fill it in here. Does that make sense? So here, I can put my hand, support hand either here or up against the rear of the butt stop. Okay. What do you think I'm doing when I just put my hand here? What am I maximizing? Recoil management, good, right? But what am I sacrificing? Stability, because I'm not being able to support the back end here. Does that make sense? So you have to figure out and make a decision on, okay, do I want to be able to manage recoil because I got a 30 cal and 28 nozzle, okay? Or I can get to take the shot because it's just a 6.5 recoil back here. Okay, go ahead. 4.99. All right, I'm at orange. I got an 18.5. Let me let Turk. Let me know what Turk is. Is that what you got? Okay. Yeah. here in New Mexico. We've been out here a couple days doing a couple classes with combined hunts. This time it's me and Phil's turn. We're going to go out here and try to get us an antelope. We have one spotted. We're still trying to see if he's a shooter or not, so stay tuned. Got a good group of goats out here. I'm not seeing anything with big enough horns though. There's a herd of about 40. Well, I'm trying, to put, <clears throat> trying to put horns on. One or two for these people to shoot. A couple miles. We'll go find something else. What I think we'll do is there's a gate up here by them sheets. Get down to that windmill, we'll probably have to stalk in. There's a the wind's blowing that way too. Yeah, there's a valley on the other side, and that pile of rocks might be our saving grace. Okay. Oh. Well, let's pack up and we'll head that way. Mark decided we'd give, get a different angle of attack with it, so we jumped out and uh, stalked to it using the uh, cow decoy. You know, you gotta be patient. We had some cows there. Obviously, a little collateral damage. Right on his shoulder. Put it right on his shoulder. Come on, baby. Yeah, be patient. Wait for a good shot. She had to wait for a good shot. We we're just watching it. And... Right there. Just, just wait a sec, Gary. That's the window right there. No, there's no cow. We gotta wait till the cows move. Come on. Come on. Come on. Turn broadside. As soon as he goes broadside, you should aim straight up, Gary. Straight up. Just straight there on. There it is, Gary. Right on his shoulder. Right there. You got him. You got him. Beautiful shot. He's down. Oh, good. Nice job, good work. That's good a good work, goal. Gary. Nice shot. But I think it was a good shot. I think uh, it was a tough goat. <laughs> good shot, cheeks. <sighs> got him. So let's go check him out. Well, that goat has some pretty dang good, pretty dang good length and mass on him. Um, I think I had more wind. Yeah, a little more wind than a little more wind than we were ready for, honestly. But uh, anyway, she made a good shot. Awesome goat, Carrie. 
Congratulations. Nice well, thank balls. you. Yeah. They told, they just I got him. Yesterday. First go. Oh. <laughs> is that the one? <sighs> Thinking this is a great day. Got a nice goat, beautiful weather. I got the best crew around. It's been an awesome adventure. All right, just recovered this bullet for my goat. So never had the opportunity to do that. Be a nice souvenir. For me, just looking forward to being able to range it and hopefully, you know, get make a good wind call uh, myself without having to rely on other people. Because, you know, that's what I've been training to do, I guess, obviously. found one just out of reach out of our ranch. Uh, so far today we have had four of our 13 hunters tag out. Uh, hopefully we can get the rest of them tagged out. If not, we'll be here bright and early in the morning and get everyone fulfilled. A few handfuls of animals of varying distances, but they're already running some of them. And we're trying to find one to top carries, which is gonna be hard because she shot a really good goat. There's the one I wanted to see. We might have one. Finally found a big open valley. Got a few go spotted out here. We'll get some glass on them, see how they look. We'll find one. Decided to come over this hill. You see that rock? Decided to creep up in this hill here. Came a little too close. They were about 650 to start with. It's going to the left. Keep tracking it. It's going to the left. 1292. Just went over. It took too long. He caught wind of us and uh, they started taking off to the, would that be, is that east of, to the north? Um, they're just moving too fast. I just want to make sure I get a clean, clean shot, clean shot, clean kill with uh, my first antelope. So decided that too far, and that we're just gonna get closer. I'll keep going over this. We're out here for day two, it's about 6.30 in the morning. Yesterday we were unsuccessful. A couple goats pretty far out, 1,200. The closest I was able to get to was about 6.50. By the time I set up, uh, you know, I, he moved out to 900 and then 1,200. And I just was uncomfortable taking the shot, especially with the conditions that I was in. So we decided to let that one pass. Hopefully uh, we get closer today. Um, hopefully we see a lot more today than, than the, the ones we saw yesterday. But I'm, look, I'm feeling good today. I'm uh, pretty confident and, you know, hopefully we bag this one in uh, less than a few hours. Go from the windmill just to the left, down. He's right there. He's bedded. Well, it's got horns on it. Let's kill it. <laughs> you can see their heads. Just their heads. You can see his horns on the left. I just saw him shake his head. And there's a piece of death right in front of him. Just right of the last black cow. Yeah. Well, it's looking about a mile so far. Um, but we're trying to close the distance just to this little knob. We're trying to come off the front. Should put us, I'm hoping, about that 800 yard range. So we shall see if the old uh, cow decoy does its job and uh, we can get a good shot on it. So. We'll see how this goes. Oh, we, uh, we found the two bugs. 
process is great to make movement door to uh, get a little closer because the, uh, the rise doesn't allow me to see them when I'm in the uh, sitting kneeling. I can only see them right now in the standing. It's a pretty far shot. Shoulder. It's good range, good range, good, good range. Dude, that was awesome. He was standing broadside, perfect. Oh man, that was like a that was awesome. <laughs> dude, that was awesome. That was I perfect. don't even care what size it is. That that was mile and a half stock is all worth it. It was an epic shot. All part of the adventure. Oh epic man, shot. dude. Oh, what a what a story, man. Oh, you guys are awesome. Thank you, that was the most perfect shot. It was so perfect on the shoulder, like. We aim for that high shoulder shot, right? Just to make them go down quick. Yep. It was literally maybe an inch left. I mean, almost, I mean, what is that? Five mile an hour wind we were doing? Six Perfect shot. Six, 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 six oh yeah, here goes his buddy right here. In my head, for six miles an hour for 500 is about, a, for me, about uh, half a mil. It's about close to two, two minutes, right? Put, put half a mil right there, like you said, right behind the shoulder. Yep. Stoked. I don't even know how to feel right now. It's crazy. You know, uh, all this training that I do and tell my students, I think just kind of work like clockwork. Uh, make sure my position good. That was the biggest thing. And my biggest thing I worried about because it was deflated was the range. You know, I knew my position was solid. I knew knew what the wind was fairly doing. It was kind of fishtailing. You know, kind of right out of our face to full value, but Ransom gave me a wind call because it was coming straight left to right. I saw it on this, my uh, wind flag here, even in the tripod, and he exposed himself. And they gave him a half, half a mil to the left, right in front of his shoulder. And nice shot, great shot. I was able to watch him take the bullet and go straight down. And he, didn't, he didn't dump like, uh, <laughs> I, but he maybe ran you, 10 yards. He ran 10 yards. You, you could tell his legs got super weak though. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it's fun. Woo! What a rush. Don't get addiction. Dude, I have a hug. Hi, 
not a bad size. It's no carry size, but wow. Look at that entrance right here. So wind call was a little too bold, right? So, because what I did was, like we talked about yesterday, I put a half mil right here. Once he came broadside, so. <laughs> Good job to everybody. That was a that was an epic hunt. That's that's exactly the way you want them to go. Doesn't happen all the time, but we so happen to catch this one on film. So, good job, guys. Well, final day. A little longer than we wanted, but makes it a hunt. We like it. Makes it a hunt. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome shot. Glad it is. Such an awesome shot.